Uh, let me play the trailer first. So um, a, a game came out back in, or it was announced, like, I think it was back in Gamescom, or f- really kind of shown off at Gamescom, called um, Time Time Loader. And it's by a uh, company. <clears throat> I'm trying to get the name of the company here. Uh, I'll be really bad because I can't remember the name of the company. <laughs> uh, the name of the the name of the company, the developer is um, Post Meta Games. Post Meta Games. So it's a single player game. Here is the uh, the Switch launch trailer. I'm playing it on Switch because uh, it has just launched for consoles and. Um, uh, and, and and switch right, and so game I think initially launched for Steam back in like November, but they're just they just kind of pumped it out everywhere. It's got this dark-ish story. It's like a really melancholy story. You saw that, so here yeah. you start to find out the very beginning. This is, this is, this is and, a bizarre. This is a bizarre trailer, man. It really yeah. is. It's like here's look at the kid's eyes, uh, and then, uh, you know look at the kid. The kid loves to you know walk and play. Oh, he's falling and. Guess what? Now, as an adult, he's in a wheelchair. He's wheelchair bound. So, um, but he hasn't. He has. I get the point. The point is, if you could change the past to make your life different, wh- how would you do it? Or what would you do? Or what's? How do you convert that into a game? Um, <clears throat> and in this case, you see this little device right there. Uh, that is is a, essentially a time machine, or, or it's linked to a time machine. So, there's a time machine. Looks a lot like a toaster i think by design this thing's a toaster and so the dude the kid uh sends this his little device the time it looks like a microwave oven dolly it's i'm sorry did i say toaster I'm, uh th- you know you said some toaster. toasters are uh, yeah uh anyways, uh-huh. um, yeah man i got you <laughs> you got me a microwave microwave oven look at that cat uh sends his little device back in time and uh, controls it from the future to do certain things to change his life uh, in in little tiny ways. I can even check out some cool stuff on computers there. Okay. So you're going back in time with this device, and you're you're kind of seeing the past with like the aquarium when the aquarium was full of life, and it's got some cool stuff. And now the aquarium's kind of dead. So and you the this game has you going back, sort of going back and forth in time a little bit. I guess uh, I don't want to spoil too much. Um, but uh, what I really kind of enjoy about it is that uh, it's a sorry, I tried to explain the trailer and it didn't work very well. It's a <laughs> physics based puzzle game in mm. that. Uh, let me stop. Stop that right there. And let me see if my videos work because I tried to I spent time before this episode getting getting this stuff going. OK, let me see. Heal. So it's a <laughs> physics based puzzler in your kind of maneuvering this little this little dude around let me see if i can actually play it this time no i'm not gonna do that i'm gonna do it this way um you're maneuvering this little dude around and uh you have to kind of solve these little things that are that are kind of popping up i have to actually hit the play button these little things that are popping up like you'll get a note that says um uh i need you to grab the uh screwdriver so you'll you'll go grab the screwdriver and you'll um take the little buggy over to uh, uh, a plate on the wall that you have to unscrew, um, which kind of, kind of interesting. Let me turn the volume down here. Um, so in this case, I was, I got trapped in the sink and I had to get back to the other side, uh, which is kind of interesting. So you're kind of maneuvering around. It's, it's got a very cool little art style, which I like. It's got this sort of realistic toy ish art. style. I had to get, get back to the living room in this case. Uh, but you can kind of climb on things, this little buggy. <clears throat> and it's it's very basic in that um, you only control this guy's arm. And you can move kind of left Directional. Right. Yeah, yeah, directional. And you can jump. So it's, it's a platformer, puzzle platformer. And you solve puzzles by grabbing stuff with the arm, holding on to it. You can kind of launch some things and throw them around a little bit. Uh, you can... Here, I'm going to play another of the videos. I'm actually going to play these videos. You can do a lot of interesting things, I think, from the physics standpoint. And I think that's what really sort of gets me excited about this game from from playing it. I've probably put about mm, two and a half hours into it right now. Um, 
and I've enjoyed every minute of it. I gotta say, which is a really weird weird thing to say about these types of uh, puzzle games. Usually, you're, you you kind of get bored, but um, or it gets repetitive. In this case, you do go back to some of the same scenes. Like here, I had to avoid waking up the cat and jump around, and you'll get a little highlight thing that pops up. Like the here, I'll show you here. You'll see the little thing pop up highlighted as I get up here, and bam. That means as I jump, I can grab onto this guy and swing across onto the other side of this table, right, or whatever. Um, and there's all these little things you can interact with in the environment. I could take that ball. This ball, for instance, wasn't here. It was actually located over here somewhere. And I had to scoot it around this way when I was heading out this way to go into the kitchen, knock the ball over here so I could use it later on to climb back up onto this uh this sort of uh, entryway. So I, I got a small little question for you. Yeah. That. How heavy does the little guy feel like when he you're feels like... he it what's real interesting. There you go. That's kind of cool. Was it, it feels like a like an RC car. Like weight wise, they got the physics down, I feel perfectly for like RC car weight, which yes. is it it feels like the the Playing it feels like the wheels are rubberized, so they, they have a little bit of a bounce. Uh, you'll see right here, and he, he kind of lands. See, they bounce a little bit. The claw feels, as you're controlling it, does kind of feel like it, like you're controlling a toy buggy. It's an RC car. You're doing it from the future, but you're able to kind of do stuff here. And, oh, by the way, in the background, there's a singing fish, <laughs> which they include there, which I thought it was so cool. Um but <clears throat> scale wise, I love that they're they nailed the scale and the feel and the physics. And I think in a for a game like this, that is so so important because uh you every want once in a while, to... every once in a while you get like a physics-based game where the thing that you're using to manipulate the physics feels inconsistent. Exactly. Yeah. So you never feel like you like like I saw you trying to like get back up on top of yeah. something by using your arm and pulling yourself yep. up. And there are times where you're playing it. It's like, this worked like a level yep. ago. And now yes. it's as if the weight of this car changed and I've done nothing. So you it, can never really get a good feel of it. But I just, it, like it, as long as it's consistent. It's very attempt. consistent. Okay. It's very consistent. And I love the, um, uh, I don't think you're supposed to use the hand to pick yourself up, but using the physics in the game yeah. i have oftentimes used the, this little arm yeah. to get myself up onto areas like right there you can get caught pretty easily yeah, they have to know when you when, when you're basing yeah. everything around physics like right like you're there. gonna be trying to yeah. do that that's what caught me on it and i'm like because and you have to they, know yeah they purposely <laughs> made that little that little uh the yeah. cat house just just tall enough <laughs> where you're going to not be able to get up there but you know there are there are instances yeah. where if you get enough speed going then you can kind of hop up on there you can yeah. you get enough speed going and you just angle your arm the right way and it's already happened in a couple couple areas where inadvertently i was literally just messing around with the physics in the game the little, the little buggy i mean he's already lifting up off the ground here a little bit yeah. um and i was able to get onto things that i probably shouldn't have been able to get onto and it's at least not at that not yet, which reminds me of stuff that you that you do in like Metroid games where you're, you know, especially like Metroid Dread, where you can kind of break the game and get to aspects ahead of time mm -hmm. that you're that you're not necessarily supposed to. But uh, it's really charming and it's um, I'm really enjoying it. And I love the layout of this house and I love the time hopping stuff and I love <laughs> to see how different things affect because there are multiple endings this game from what i've what i've kind of found out the game is from i think it was originally re released in november i want to say um and just do google search there are multiple endings there are multiple stuff essentially how you approach these little puzzles um will affect the the guy will affect the story at the you know by the end of the game like there's you'll come across a notepad for instance with stuff scribbled on it which you can completely miss it but if you do happen to grab it and kind of relocate it to another per another place in the story, he may find that the next time he's in the house, as opposed to this thing just being under a bed or under a table or something. And it could affect, you know, a little bit of the plot later on. So it's a really neat mix of physics based kind of simple puzzle platforming with um, the narrative aspect. 
with kind of again really weirdly dark story that's that's built into it uh as sort of the background but um if there's anything that i'm i'm bummed about again again i i think if you got a if you got a anything that this is on which is everything i think as as of the last couple of weeks i would actually suggest looking into it because it's that, that charming um i'm a little bummed that there's no like gyro or motion controls for this switch. i would love to take the switch and tilt certain things to get like a little bit more accuracy especially with physics based stuff uh there are other games on on the switch and on like you know places on playstation and on other you know other other types of similar things where you can actually start to rotate the controller a little bit and get get a little bit more accuracy or even mess with the physics that way and you can't do that in this game and so i think it's a, a little bit of a bummer that you have the platform that can do that but you don't take full advantage of it especially in a game like this but uh yeah time loader uh it's charming it's very easy to understand and pick up um and it's got enough it's got enough to do in the game where even some of the the stuff that might seem repetitive actually isn't because you're you're kind of feeding this loop over and over again. So yeah, I think it's actually a really cool travel game. You know, on a on a on a plane trip, on a plane ride, which we're going to be on here in a little in a little bit, a couple of weeks here. Um, I think it's an awesome game for like trips. You know, a little bit like car rides or plane rides and stuff. I think it's it might fit in perfectly with that so anyways uh time loader really cool definitely perfect on handheld um i don't know if i'd want to play it on a i did play it on the big screen but i i loved it on the handheld because it just kind of feels like i'm actually controlling an rc car in the past so yeah mm. 